morning, everyone. Welcome to the regularly scheduled meeting of the Board of Public Works for today, Monday, September 18th, 2017. Commissioner Rivas, repenting James Davison has sent to our president. President James, we have a quorum. May we start with bureau introductions, please, starting with Bureau Street Services. Good morning, Tim Tyson, Bureau Street Services. Good morning, Ruben Flamenco, Bureau of Street Lighting. Good morning, Roshan Aflaki, Bureau of Sanitation. Good morning, Larry Shu, Bureau of Engineering. Good morning, Chris Smith, Bureau of Contract Administration. Good morning, Ted Jordan, Public Works General Counsel. Fernando Campos, Executive Officer. President James, we did receive a speaker card under general public comment. We have no commentary under the Neighborhood Council comment section, and we also received comments on item number three via email, which will be distributed to all commissioners this morning. Okay, um, let's close the Neighborhood Council category of commentary. Um, just a couple of um, administrative items. Um, agenda item number uh, six, release of a stop notice. Gio Rodriguez Trucking Incorporated has transmitted the release of a stop notice in the amount of $2,745.50 for furnishing dump trucks in connection with the Los Angeles Police Department new Northeast Area Police Station project. The contractor is Bernard's Brothers Incorporated. Is there a second to my motion that we receive agenda item number six forthwith by Commissioners Davis and Rivas? Any objection? Without objection, we will do so. Agenda item number seven, release of a stop notice, Southwest V Ditch Incorporated has transmitted the release of a stop notice in the amount of $101,778.55 for supply and installation of concrete on slope, finish, shotcrete, and test panel in connection with the Group 3, uh, 1039 Montecito Drive retaining wall replacement, and 420 through 438 West 2nd Street unstable cut slope repair project the contractor is John S. Meek, Company Incorporated. Is there a second to my motion that we receive agenda item number seven forthwith by Commissioner Sento? Any objection? Without objection, we will do so. Agenda item number five, authorization to open bids, recommending that the board authorize the executive officer or the assistant executive officer to receive, open, and declare bids to be received at 10 o'clock a.m. on uh, Wednesday, September 20th, 2017, and to formally report on the results of the bid opening at the Board of Public Works meeting scheduled for Monday, September 25th, 2017. This is due to the fact that we are doing a community meeting um, uh, 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 on Tuesday evening. Uh, so the board meeting has moved to Tuesday evening instead of Wednesday morning. So that way we can allow our executive officer to still open the bids at the, uh, at the same time that the bidders are used to and have been notified for. Any questions on agenda item number eight? I'm sorry, on agenda item number five. Uh, okay, there, I'll make a motion that we adopt agenda item number five. Seconded by Commissioners Davis and Repenning. Any objection? Without objection, we'll adopt agenda item number five. Any issues sending number five forthwith? We will send number five forthwith. Also, uh, one housekeeping item. Agenda item number three in Council District 2, tree removal at 11580 Sunshine Terrace. The parties have requested a continuance uh, to October 2nd, 2017. The council office has agreed to that continuance. Uh, so it would be um, our recommendation that we order agenda item three continued to October 2nd, 2017. Without objection, that will be the order. Um, so with that, we have uh, presentations uh, this morning. Certificates of recognition, street vendor cleanup caravan presented by the Board of Public Works, Commissioner Repenning. This on? Morning. Hi. Um, good morning. Y, um, buenos dias a todos. Um, as, as all of you know, I have been uh, involved with the Clean Streets program, and you know it's really important that we um, engage our local community in helping us be part of um, keeping our, our streets and our neighborhoods clean and safe. And um, I really wanted to recognize uh, what I thought was a unique. Um, collaboration uh, with our some of our um, our local street vendors um, uh, you know in my opinion um, the, our, the folks who are working as street vendors in Los Angeles um, are 
an important part of our economic life, of our cultural life. Um, there are folks who are out there um, trying to make a living and bringing services and bringing food to our communities. And so I just wanted to recognize um, their partnership with us in keeping our streets clean. And um, there was a recent event, uh, a caravan, in which they cleaned up four different neighborhoods. And so we wanted to recognize that here today. OK. Um, uh, I would ask um, Carla uh, De, De Paz from uh, the East LA uh, Community Corporation to say a few words. <laughs> Good, morning, Good morning, everyone. Um, as Heather mentioned, I'm Carla De Paz. I'm the Director of Community Organizing at the East LA Community Corporation. And I'm very happy to be here um, in, in this day um, honoring these, these folks and recognizing them for the work that they've done. So vendors from the uh, Legalized Street Vending Campaign organized this, this effort um, and woke up very early on May, May 11th, I believe, five in the morning to be in the valley and drove across the city um, and ended up picking up seven truckloads of trash from different um, areas where vending is very prominent. And they wanted to do this to tackle um, that misconception that um, that vending is, is dirty or vending will cause trash to communities. Um, this is an organized group of over a thousand vendors across the city who has been working very hard for many years and we've had the pleasure to, to work with them um, in creating a permit system here in our city so that they can do their work legally. And we believe that that will help, help with that misconception um, that vendors uh, can't be organized, vendors you know don't wanna follow the rules. These folks plan this event uh, for that reason. So I wanted to uh, let Evangelina, who's one of our vendor le leaders, give you some words as well, just to tell you a little bit more about the event, um, you know, and their effort to, to le legitimize their work in the city. Thank you. <clears throat> Buenos días. Buenos días. Señores aquí presentes. Soy Evangelina y soy una humilde vendedora. Yo represento a su centro de Los Ángeles, ahí es donde yo trabajo. Good morning, my name is Evangelina. I'm a humble street vendor and I represent the area of South Central. That's where I do my work. Y estoy aquí para agradecerles en nombre de todos nuestros compañeros que participamos en la caravana de limpieza en el mes de mayo por su reconocimiento que nos están haciendo en este momento. Les agradecemos. And I'm here representing all of, uh, all of the vendors who participated in the cleanup caravan in May. Um, we thank you for this recognition. La mayoría de nosotros, los vendedores, somos de bajos recursos y hacemos ese trabajo para mantener humildemente a nuestras familias. The majority of us street vendors are um, low income folks and families and we do this work to be able to support our families. Desafortunadamente, todavía no ha existido un sistema que nos apoye legalmente. Unfortunately, there still isn't a system that um, supports, us do our, supports us to do our work in a legal way. Por eso, equivocadamente, erróneamente, se ha creado un estereotipo para nosotros los vendedores. Muchas personas nos catalogan como personas ordinarias, personas sucias, que dejamos las aceras o los lugares sucios. And for that reason, um, there's this false misconception and stereotype that we as vendors um, you create uh, the dirtiness or trash that we leave the sidewalks dirty. Por esa razón, nosotros los vendedores nos organizamos para realizar una campaña de limpieza en el mes de mayo para demostrarle a la sociedad y para concientizarla que nosotros somos vendedores organizados, vendedores responsables, vendedores limpios. For that reason, we organized the cleanup caravan in May to show our city that um, we are organized vendors, that we are clean vendors, and we're responsible vendors. Como hace un momento les dije, nosotros somos vendedores que nos estamos organizando para la limpieza en las áreas de nuestra comunidad, en las áreas donde estamos trabajando, y para luchar y tener una mediación con los pequeños comercios. We are also organized in the specific areas where we vend, Evangelina Vends in South Central. Um, so uh, we are organized to make sure that our sidewalks in the area that we vend are clean and also to create mediation between small businesses when issues arise. 
pero desafortunadamente este sábado 16 de septiembre ocurrió que se presentaron personas de la ciudad, ¿verdad?, a darles tickets a muchos compañeros. Esos tickets que todavía nos perjudican más nuestra economía familiar. Aparte de eso, hay muchas personas que corren el riesgo debido a los tickets a que se les dé, corren el riesgo del proceso de la deportación. Tienen miedo, tenemos familias, tenemos hijos que nacieron en este país y solamente estamos pidiendo trabajar honradamente, legalmente. Y la única manera como podemos trabajar es que ustedes, que en sus manos está, traten de buscar una solución para que nosotros trabajemos de acuerdo a como ustedes lo piden, a como la ciudad quiere que trabajemos. Nosotros también queremos trabajar, tenemos familias. Unfortunately, this Saturday, um, the 16th of September, um, the, at 9 a.m. in the area where Evangelina works on Main Street, uh, the city shut up, so Bureau Street Services along with LAPD shut up to give folks tickets um, for vending on the sidewalks. Um, so, you know, it's, that becomes another burden to our families, an economic burden as we are trying to figure out this process of legalizing street vending to continue to receive tickets. Um, and then there's also other folks who receive different other types of tickets who are at fear of deportation for still receiving criminal charges. Um, so I just ask you in any way that you can support, um, you know, you, the city, the council, um, to support vendors in us doing the work that we want to do. We want to do the work in the way that the city is asking us to do our work. So we just ask for your support. Con esos tickets se nos está todavía nuestra economía y nuestro bolsillo se está deteriorando más. Y como tenemos que ahorrar para cuando ustedes nos den el permiso, aprueben nuestro permiso. Somos más de miles de familias que necesitamos la aprobación de ustedes. En sus manos está para que nosotros seamos vendedores legales. Estamos dispuestos a trabajar organizadamente y como ustedes lo pidan. Pero necesitamos la aprobación de ustedes. No me miren a mí nada más. Yo solamente soy la voz de todos mis compañeros que no pudieron estar presentes. Para que ustedes tomen conciencia, sientan empatía de lo que nosotros sentimos. En sus manos está que tengamos un permiso. Um, so, yeah, just similar to, to before, what Evangelina was saying before is um, the, to the tickets that we're receiving are just an economic burden. And when it comes time to legalize vending and we're going to have to pay permits and we're going to have to pay taxes and these other things that will come with legalizing vending, having that debt of continuously receiving tickets as we're working now is going to make that difficult. So we're just asking you to support in, a, it, in any way you can um, to make sure that we can do this work in the way that the city is asking us. Por último, les agradecemos todos, en nombre de todos mis compañeros, que nos hayan escuchado y nos hayas invitado y nos den este reconocimiento el día de hoy. Porque apenas se nos está mirando. Somos vendedores que hemos estado por muchos años en las sombras. Y nosotros queremos tener garantías como todos los demás trabajadores de este país. Gracias y pasen ustedes un buen día. Just to wrap it up, uh, we thank you again for this recognition. Um, it, you know, vendors are just starting to be, to recognize for the work that they do. We've worked in the shadows for many years. Um, so we're happy to be receiving this recognition. Um, and we look forward to, you know, working with you and, and, and receiving also the, the, you know, the permits that vendors um, deserve to get. So thank you very much. Um, and then I just wanted to ask folks who are here, because these are all the folks who organized the Clean Up Caravan, if they can stand up so we can give them a hand of applause. Round of applause. Thank you, Commissioner Repenning. Thank you. Um, I have a bunch of certificates here. Should I, should we go ahead and call them out? That's okay with you. Okay. Yeah, just run them through. Yeah, thank okay. you for uh, your, your patience. Um, Ana Maria Gil. The next one's going to be Ana Mar Maradi Diaga.
um, Natalia Garcia Olarte and Rosas Miranda. Um, Rosas? No está? Okay. Uh, Abraham Zavala. Oh, is that, is that you? Okay, well, I'm going to put this right here. <laughs> Danielle Garcia. Danielle. No, okay. And Martina Avila Mendez. Eulogio Mendez Herrera. And Jose Ugalde. Jose? No está, okay. Um, Ophelia Ruiz. Están trabajando. <laughs> Um, Umberto Yauli Faustina Martinez y Prudencia Lopez Merced Sanchez. Rigoberta Morales. Jorge Escobedo, and the next one is Santa Huerta, Isabel Rodriguez. Evangelina Paredes and Israel Trejo Idalia Mendoza. And Dora Pineda. Good morning. Um, Federico Matos and Elizabeth Medina. And Ignacia Cid Sanchez. Okay, and finally, um, Margarito Mendez Santos. Um, 
um, colleagues, if any of you would like to address the group here today. Thank you, Commissioner Repenning. We'll start with Commissioner Asinto. Thank you, President James. Vice President Repenning, thank you so much for your leadership. For bringing, yeah, a ver, un aplauso, por favor. For bringing to light the reality of what's going on in our communities and the ownership and the responsibility that, that our street vendors, our negocios, um, campeones de, de la comunidad, todos ustedes. Thank you for, for that. Bueno. So thank you for championing that, Commissioner Repenning. And I see our friends, uh, Rudy Espinosa and Claire Fox, and these are all partners in the movement to do what's right for our city. So I want to thank you um, to all our negocios, to todas nuestras familias, que sigue la lucha, and you have to continue. And on Public Works, we will be with you uh, to work for a way where we can not only uh, thank you for your cleanup, of uh, la comunidad, but also the process by which everybody in this city can make a living and contribute back as that's the mayor's vision. So thank you so much. Gracias a todos y God bless you all. Thank you, Commissioner Asento. <laughs> Commissioner Davis. Good, uh, I'd also like to thank our colleague, our vice chair, our vice president, uh, Heather Repenning, for raising this issue about uh, <clears throat> what we need to do. I want to first say <clears throat> that the mayor, in his Back to Basic Principles, says that one of his objectives is to increase employment opportunities throughout Los Angeles. And certainly, as we look at the work that is being done by our vendors, this is certainly a decent job that individuals in the city of Los Angeles are engaged in. And it is really clear that the Public Works Department has a role in helping to make sure that we continue to assist in the work that you do. And I understand that street services is involved. And I also understand that the uh, County of Los Angeles Environmental Health Department is equally involved. And collaboration is critically important in our government. But what is of interest to me as a commissioner <clears throat> is that we provide in government the opportunity to legalize the service. And I'm just <clears throat> sitting here not having done the research wondering what is taking so long. So I have some work to do as a commissioner to find out what is taking so long. I believe that we have a responsibility to provide service and technical assistance to citizens in Los Angeles to thrive and to do what the mayor has said that we want to do. And that is create an opportunity so that you can work without any problems, without any barriers. And it is our job and we have the resources to do that. So <clears throat> I will, as a result of this presentation, be researching myself to find out what it is that's taking us so long. So welcome to City Hall and thank you for educating me, uh, particularly uh, Commissioner Repenning on this leadership that you've provided for us. And I am thoroughly uh, appreciative of you bringing this to our attention. Thank you so much. Thank you, Commissioner Davis. Thank you, Commissioner Davis. Commissioner Rivas. Muchas gracias, Evangelina, um, Carla, y a todos sus compañeros por um, organizarse y organizar el evento, ¿verdad? Para demostrar que los vendedores um, no están causando uh, mal, ¿verdad? Son empresas pequeñas, no están en las sombras, ¿verdad? Porque nosotros queremos su producto, queremos comprar sus productos y, y ojalá que, uh, espero que la ciudad y que todos nosotros aquí uh, trabajemos para una solución, ¿verdad? Para legalizar que no sean criminales, ¿verdad? Porque no son, ¿verdad? Es, es trabajo honrado, es algo que ustedes hacen por sus familias, pero también para la gente de Los Ángeles, ¿verdad? Y, no, y, y nosotros queremos promover estas um, empresas que ustedes tienen. Um, y es, y um, admiro su, su trabajo y sus acciones y muchas gracias um, por no quedarse callados, ¿verdad? Y, y por... Um, estar aquí, yo sé que es 
a veces difícil dejar su trabajo para venir, um, pero nosotros necesitamos ver su presencia aquí. Y um, muchas gracias por, por todo su trabajo y sacrificio. Um, y espero trabajar con ustedes para um, una solución que nos beneficie a todos en Los Ángeles. Muchas gracias. Sí, cómo no, ¿verdad? Sí. So, so. I just thanked um, everybody, um, especially the presenters and the organizations that um, support them um, for being here and taking the time to, to be present and to take action, especially in organizing the event um, where they um, cleaned up different areas. Um, I know it takes a lot of time to do that and they're taking time away from their own businesses that Unfortunately, we don't, uh, we see as, cr as a crime in this city and unlike other big cities and um, our countries in Latin America where that's just part of, you know, everyday life, um, I hope that Los Angeles um, comes up with a solution that benefits all of us because a lot of us are their clients, right? We buy things from sidewalk vendors, we, um, and we benefit too um, from as, as well as uh, their own families, um, because this is, these are small businesses that I know our mayor tries to promote, um, you know, small businesses in Los Angeles, and these are, you know, thousands of them all over the city. Um, so I just wanted to thank them, and I hope to work with them um, to help our city find a solution. Thank you, Commissioner Rivas. Um, so, congratulations, everyone, on your recognition this morning. Um, Commissioner Penning, thank you um, for the work that you've done uh, in leading this. Um, and let me just say thank you to all of you uh, for the work that you've done um, in partnership with us in helping to keep our streets clean. Um, Rudy has been in my office, I don't know how many times... Just once? Okay, well maybe, maybe, okay, I feel like I've had more than one meeting, but one meeting very recently. Um, it's, um, it's a process in City Hall, um, uh, and um, we look forward to uh, a resolution with the City Council and, and being able to, um, to be partners with you as your businesses continue in the City of Los Angeles. So, th and, and, but for me, most importantly this morning, thank you so much for being a partner with us um, in, um, in helping us keep our streets clean. We look forward to a continuing partnership with all of you. Um, and I'll echo what my colleagues said. Um, I know it's, um, it's very important um, uh, for you that, to have time uh, in your communities and for you to take time out and away from your families and from your work to come to City Hall um, to represent uh, uh, the work that you do uh, and to educate us on that is, is uh, not lost on us on how important that is for you to be here. So thank you for being here in City Hall as well. And congratulations, everyone. We're gonna take a brief recess um, for one, pho where, where's our, we have our team pho photographer, there she is. Um, uh, and we'll do it in the back of the room with Commissioner Repenning. Uh, we do like to do a group photograph with people that are honored at the Board of Public Works, and we'll be back in, oh, two minutes or so.
So we're going to get back on our agenda. We've got three up here, right? Oh, we have four up here. Agenda item number one, Council District 15, Subcontract Outreach Program Report, Brown and Caldwell for Design Support Services during construction for the Terminal Way Pumping Plant Rehabilitation Project. Jen Wen. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, my name is Jin Wen from Bureau of Engineering uh, with Water Convince Engineering Division. Uh, we're here to uh, present the subcontract uh, subcontractor uh, outreach program for the uh, Brown and Caldwell to provide design uh, support services during construction for the terminal way pumping plant rehabilitation project. Uh, on uh, July 12, the board requested the bureau to come uh, to come back to report the status on uh, MBE, WB, and OBE when approving the sole source uh, contract for. Uh, for the project. And we recommend the board to receive and file this report. Uh, the project is located in uh, Council District 15. Uh, currently it's in 26% uh, in construction. Uh, the initial contract uh, issued on August 18, 2014 uh, to Brown and Caldwell uh, expire on July 12, 2017. Uh, this initial contract was subject to MBE, WB, and OBE requirements. Uh, Wong and Caldwell uh, pledge 19.7% for MBE, 6.9% uh, for WBE, and 2.4% for OBE. Uh, these numbers were revised to 18.51% for MBE, 6.47% for WBE, and 2.22% for OBE after the NTP number two was, was issued for the additional uh, scope. And those work were proposed uh, to be performed by the prime. As of July 12, 2017, I will receive an invoice of three, uh, 340,550 from Brown and Caldwell. Uh, their participation level were 11.09% for MBE, 3.28% for WB, and 1.9% for OBE, as shows in on table number one. Uh, for the record, uh, the column under uh, gender and the ethnicity on table one uh, was, re uh, was corrected to uh, for project line, uh, it should be uh, a female and uh, Asian Pacific American. And uh, integrate engineering, it should be female and uh, Caucasian. And uh, V and A should be uh, male and uh, Caucasian. Uh, Caucasian. Uh, I mean, could you repeat the... Uh the integrated engineering management firm again, please. What did you say? Uh, the uh, IEM, the integrated engineering management firm. You, I missed that. I apologize. Oh, but I'm just correcting the the table uh, under gender and the ethnicity column. Yes, sir. Uh, there should be uh, uh, female and uh, uh, Caucasian. The integrated engineering management is female and Caucasian. Correct. And then you said Project Line Technical Services was what? This is a It's male. a female Asian American, uh, Pacific American. Okay, Asian Pacific, APA. Okay, thank you. And then Mr. Wynn, also Fernando Campos, Executive Officer, for the agenda, um, I'm sorry, for the gender ethnicity column, would that also be revised as well? Sorry? For the gender ethnicity column, would that be required uh, to be amended as well? So if Project Line Technical Services is to be female, Asian American, uh, currently it shows male. Yes. So uh, we would make those changes as well. Right. Thank you. Okay, so uh, Dr. Campos, it seems to me that um, what, what's cur what I'm curious about this, just to receive and, re and file, shouldn't we uh, adopt and approve this? So the board would have to adopt and receive, the, I'm sorry, adopt and approve this, um, adopt this report 
um, as amended so right. that we can take into consideration Mr. Wynn's um, so edits. we're amending the we're amending the agenda item as well. They're asking for receiving and filing. This was the sole source was approved in July. Correct. Now we're dealing with the uh, business inclusion program. So why don't we just adopt Cor it? Correct. So the board would have to uh, take action by adopting this item as amended. Right. A a as amended. Correct. Okay, Commissioner Sinto. Thank you, President James. Uh, Jin, thank you for this. You know, w what I see is that um, we have targets, and then the actual performance of the contractor uh, was not as high as the, con uh, as the target. And if we go to now that we are under BIP for this next moving forward, um, the hope and expectation is that they're gonna achieve uh, what they pledged at 18, well, we're gonna, they pledge uh, right. at 18, five, one, and 6.4%, which is good. So I think my, my wish would be back to the contractors that really want to ask them to work to secure the subs to get these numbers? Uh, yes, well, we received an invoice, uh, we reviewed their invoice, and uh, the bond and the call were stated in the invoice that deviation of the participant level was a uh, was result of a scope change for the sub, and also the sub complete uh, uh, the, the, the work under their original budget. Uh, so we are uh, working with them and then uh, of course, try to achieve the anticipated level of the anticipation. Great, let's go ahead and follow up on that. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, anything further? Uh, Commissioner, uh, uh, Dr. Campos? Yeah, Mr. President, I'm sorry, just, just so that I'm very clear on this, Transmittal number one did already authorize City Engineer to award this toss. So the report before you is That's to receive and file. Yeah. Correct, so I was just um, discussing this with our council and the agenda is correct as posted, and that is just to receive and file, so there would be no action taken on this. So my apologies if I cause any confusion on this. I was looking at transmittal number one, which is requesting the authorization to the city engineer to award the toss. Well, no, that I was already taken. Yeah, that I'm was already taken yeah. into action. Yeah. So we would receive and, uh, and file this report as amended so that we can reflect those changes on table one. Got it. All right. Um, thank you for um, answering that and for clarifying that. I'm sorry if I caused any confusion. Uh, then I'll make a motion that we receive and file as amended accordingly. Seconded by Commissioner uh, Jacinto. Any objection? With that objection, we'll um, receive and file agenda item number one. Thank you. Um, let's go to, um, uh, I want to get to agenda item number eight, which is our oral report from Metro, but let's start with um, general public comment. Um, Mr. Sutton, you put in a card for general public comment, so why don't we start here and, and then we'll move along. I put it in because I didn't see the agenda item eight, but I had comments in general. Number one, on your, the problem of street performances at your agendas and the city council. That's fine. The, the problem is that uh, the governing bodies have, I think, incorrectly tried to apply a remedy that is too, too all-encompassing, which is to ban speakers. But to the extent that the body has the ability to make a finding or determine that a speaker basically is engaging in irrelevant statements and putting on a performance, the remedy should be something less than banning the speaker. The remedy could be this person's public comment will be at the end of the agenda. This person's public comment will be limited to a minute or less. And so that you're not running afoul of the notion that you're preventing someone from speaking, but when they have abused the process of speaking by basically talking about nonsense or just coming in and insulting you for two minutes. I, I think that, you know, and maybe it's going to require an ordinance or something, but it, clearly you have the ability to take measures that are less drastic than banning or something the, the redevelopment agents used to do back in the 80s, having people arrested. Uh, those kind of remedies, I think, are, are, are too much, but you, you have a way to keep your meeting moving and not uh, uh, basically reward people for wasting your time and saying, if you're going to come in and put on a performance, you're going to go at the end. Um, on the issue that you just dealt with, which is street vendors, and I'll talk about this a little later because it does relate to the Bonaventure question. In, in 1985, in a case called Chalmers versus City of Los Angeles, both the Ninth Circuit and the District Court found the city liable for basically ar arresting and harassing a street vendor who was uh, selling King Tut t-shirts on Wilshire in front of the county museum during a King Tut 
exhibition, and the implication was that the county museum had asked the city to get rid of this person who was competing with their uh, museum shop. Two minutes. And, Go ahead and finish. And, and Ms. Chalmers got a jury verdict, the city appealed, and the city lost. And so that, that was in 1985. So that's 32 years ago in dealing with street vendors, and there's still some issues. Right. Thank you, sir. Um, so let's go. That, so no other general public comment cards? That is correct. Uh, so um, on agenda item number eight, uh, we have our oral report, um, transportation project status update, Metropolitan Transit Authority and Department of Transportation. Um, you have a card in, uh, Mr. Sutton. You want to uh, you, you at least put something on the table, and if we have questions, then we can come back to you. So on regional connector, the city has an ordinance that says that when a developer or anybody under its jurisdiction is going to close a street, they have to prepare what's called a traffic management plan. And as part of a traffic management plan, it goes to LADOT and it goes to BOE. I think Mr. Mr. G, who was here last week, governs that in terms of this project. Mr. Sir, uh, Jesus Serrano at DOT governs it in terms of this project. In the fall of, of 2015, MTA started going through the process of submitting a TMP for Flower Street, as it had already done for First and Alameda, First and Central, uh, Second and Broadway, Second and uh, must be uh, Spring, and then Second and Hope. But in those cases, there was not a adjoining property owner who was, you know, aggressively objecting and suing MTA, and so that. What happened was the normal process of having a TMP first and then doing a series of worksite traffic control plans, that process was in place for the other uh, three or four project locations on this project. But in the fall of 2015, MTA and BOE and LADOT were essentially at an impasse because your staff and the DOT staff was saying the documents that MTA was submitting were insufficient. And MTA was getting very anxious and nervous. They wanted to have their documents approved. And so what we believe happened, that in the end of 2015 and early 2016, a political intervention took place. We believe the mayor's office intervened with the senior staff at DOT and the BOE. And that, in fact, the requirement for a city-approved TMP was an effectively waived and that they just went ahead immediately and started submitting worksite traffic control plans for Flower Street without a governing traffic management plan, which is the framework that you, you apply everywhere else and had been applied elsewhere on this project. And so that when we started objecting, eventually, a year or so later, uh, they adopted a TMP. Two minutes. But, but, not, but not a city TMP. MTA adopted an MTA internal TMP because they said, well, our environmental documents which were put in front of this board two weeks ago, both on the 6th and, the, and the, the 11th, those environmental documents say that there shall be a traffic management plan before major construction activity in, involving the streets. And this question is, has MTA been given a special treatment or favor on Flower Street because they didn't have to do a city TMP before they submitted the worksite traffic control plans? And I think that if you want to, you could have a report from your staff, Mr. G at BOE, ask Mr. Serrano at, uh, at DOT, ask Mr. Uh, Brewer and his assistant, Mr. Santiago at, at Contract Administration, on, on the relationship of what's gone on over the last uh, two and a half years in getting these street closures approved. And, that's, and so that the Bonaventure is very concerned that there has been a, essentially, a, a waiver of the city's normal procedures. And so that if, if this wasn't MTA, if this was a private developer who was submitting this, we would have the ability to complain directly to contract administration or to DOT or BUE when they failed to uh, honor their commitments. Last Friday, MTA sent out one of their internet email notices that all of these events that are now occurring on Flower Street are all going to be extended. This is notice of extension of duration on on the sound wall, on all these things, so that they're now going back and extending these things. And under your normal provisions... Okay, so now you're repeating yourself, so 60 seconds to finish up. Sure. So that, so that we believe that the city has not protected the property owners on Flower Street by applying the normal 
provisions for a traffic management plan before the worksite traffic control plans. And the reason the Chalmers case is relevant is because in Chalmers, the city put their finger on the scale as to Julie Chalmers and said she couldn't sell t-shirts. Then another case called Golden State Transit versus City of Los Angeles, which went all the way to the US Supreme Court in 1989, which is where the city used their land use powers to try to coerce a, 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 a taxi cab company to reach a settlement with their drivers in a strike. And so that what we believe is happening here with the Bonaventure MTA in the city is the city has, is not even handedly applying their existing ordinances and their existing procedures that if MTA was a private developer who wanted to close Flower Street off and on for over an 18 month period and sometimes like at 6th Street now, the entire intersection being closed for six months, that's a block south of the Bonaventure. But we believe that the city needs to be more critical, needs to apply the normal procedures it applies to everybody else. If we were building a building or someone else, so that, so that so BOE and DOT, okay. everybody else could exercise their powers. And we should suggest that you ask your staff what they feel has happened regarding MTA over the last two years. Thank That's you, what Mr. we're asking you to do. Thank you, Mr. Sutton. So, uh, Mr. Clark, on agenda item number eight, and I know that you're going to take us through the various projects. So the floor is yours, sir. Thank you. Uh, yes, thank you, President James and commissioners. Uh, we will always welcome this opportunity to give the updates on a quarterly basis. Thanks, Fernando, for um, getting us on board. Um, I'm uh, going to have our project managers, as you stated, go through each of the projects. We really are full bore into construction. We're at various stages on each project. Uh, working very well, I believe, with the city. Uh, you know, I want to thank Larry Shu from BOE, who is uh, intimately involved in everything that we do. So uh, with that, I'm going to uh, turn it over to Gary Baker, who's the project manager on the Regional Connector Project here downtown. Gary. Good morning, President James and uh, members of the board. Um, I'd like to address our um, presentation this morning around some key construction activities that are going on, but then also to specifically address uh, two items that you've asked me to talk about this morning that have been brought up in previous board meetings during the last two weeks. Um, this uh, introductory slide just talks about the uh, alignment of the uh, regional connector. I think we're all familiar with that. Uh, going to the next uh, picture here, just kind of marks, uh, maybe old news now, but marks a big milestone in the project when we completed our first tunnel back in the uh, end of July. We've since recovered the machine and uh, are now prepared to relaunch it actually next Monday, a week from today. So that's uh, huge progress for the, for the job and we're all excited about that. Turning over to the next slide, uh, perhaps a few weeks outdated, but this gives you a sense of the scale and scope of the work uh, happening at Broadway underneath the street there uh, without any impact to uh, public traffic. Uh, again, uh, it's a major utility relocation. Works, work is progressing there well. as also. Then at the uh, Grand Avenue Arts Bunker Hill Station, the station is largely excavated or is excavated. Uh, construction is kind of uh, waiting, a major construction is waiting until our tunnels are completed. But uh, also this serves as kind of a, uh, a popular destination for tour groups and we re remain committed with the community and uh, use this site frequently to uh, demonstrate to the community the, the scope and the scale of the work. It's an amazing shot, and, and just having been there a number of times, Gary, I, I know why the tour group stopped by. Um, in this in particular case, the uh, Bunker Hill Condos Association, which is surrounding the site, uh, came and visited, this, visited the job. So things are going there uh, very well. Then turning to our work on Flower Street, this has uh, been the subject of uh, two recent actions to the board, and uh, we've been uh, requesting, we had requested uh, approval to close during the weekend so that we could complete the decking between 5th and 6th. This past weekend we completed all of our decking in the 6th Street intersection, uh, which is a challenge. Now we're focused uh, uh, south of 5th and 6th. This kind of aerial view just gives you an idea of some of the uh, 
uh, puts things in context a little bit. Uh, we have key stakeholders, McGuire Gardens, obviously, uh, City National Plaza, California Club, Standard Hotel, and other key stakeholders in addition to the Bonaventure that uh, we meet with regularly and coordinate work with. Uh, I think this past weekend things went very well. We were notified by the Bonaventure that there was a, a major delivery to be made and that was accommodated on Saturday morning. And uh, I'm not aware of any other complaints from the hotel uh, about work this weekend. Um, <clears throat> turning to the uh, next slide, just some mitigation measures um, that we had implemented on, I think, one of the weekends in question on uh, September 8th. It just uh, shows some of the, the different types of mitigation, whether it's sound uh, monitoring, protection, uh, traffic control, um, et cetera. Um, also at that meeting, um, I believe on the 11th, there was a couple photos, three photos that were submitted to the board, and you'd asked me to respond to those today. So if you turn uh, to the next slide, <coughs> um, the photo on the left uh, was one of the photos that was given to you and represented uh, us having blocked the street or blocked uh, loading access to their loading dock. Uh, the graphic on the right is actually the approved traffic control plan and the area in red shows access to the loading dock for small vehicles. Uh, in all cases, if there's ever a large vehicle to come on the weekend, cones are picked up, we have flaggers out there and those vehicles are guided in. So uh, I, uh, I think it's just it, it's good to see these uh, photos and place them in context with what's happening. And likewise, on the following page, uh, a similar photograph that shows that uh, deliveries were having to be made from the sidewalk uh, because entrances to both the parking garage and the loading docks were closed. Um, again, um, we've maintained access to the, to the hotel through both entrances. The uh, photograph on the right shows that it's uh, a common practice for small vendors to uh, park on the sidewalk or even deliver at the curbside even when construction is not in progress. So um, I, hopefully that has satisfactorily uh, addressed those two questions that were uh, uh, posed last week. Uh, you had also asked, uh, and we had a brief discussion about the business interruption fund. And uh, so kind of concluding my presentation, I'd like to ask uh, Paula Carvajal to come forward and discuss in detail and answer questions you had regarding that, if that's acceptable. Great, thank you, sir. My name is Paula Carvajal, and I'm the manager of the Business Interruption Fund program at Metro. And um, I'll be providing some information about the program overall, a little bit of the history, and then some of the current status of the program. So when we look at the history of the program, the program was first authorized by Metro's Board of Directors in October of 2014. And it was authorized, as you know, to provide financial assistance to small businesses that are directly impacted by construction. The program was authorized for the Little Tokyo area of the Regional Connector. And the slide uh, shows that the second of Broadway was authorized at that time, but that's actually an error. And I apologize for that, because at the time, only the Little Tokyo area was authorized as part of the program. In addition to the Regional Connector Little Tokyo area, the Crenshaw LAX transit project was authorized, and then also section one of the Purple Line extension. And then in December of 2015, the program was expanded to include Second and Broadway. And the reason for that was because at the time, um, there was information that came forward to the Metro's Board of Directors that the Second and Broadway segment would, be, would experience a significant closure. It was an unprecedented full street closure of the entire intersection for six months. So that information was presented to the board and it was something that the board considered and they made the decision to expand the BIF program to include that intersection. Um, but in addition to including that specific intersection, they actually made a change to the program that expanded other, um, other areas within a similar situation that met that criteria. Um, they would also be included in the program. And then a year later, in December of 2016, the board authorized another expansion of the program, which included section two of the Purple Line extension. So to date, the program um, has now been implemented for a little bit over two years, and uh, we've actually awarded over $10.5 million for all three projects together, and uh, that's representative of 489 grants 
add to 241 small businesses for all three of the projects um, as a whole. When you look at the information specifically for uh, the regional connector, you'll see how that breaks out. So of the $10.5 million, 2.6 has been awarded to small businesses um, within the regional connector project. And you can see how that is split between the Little Tokyo area and then the second and Broadway segment of the regional connector. Uh, moving forward, we continue to work very closely with small businesses. Um, this is a pilot study. It's a pilot program. It's the first type of program that Metro has implemented during these types of mega, con uh, mega projects uh, for the agency. And so it is something that we are assessing on a regular basis and we welcome public comment because it really helps us look at how our program is being implemented. Because it is a pilot program, all of the information that we see becomes very important to us as we move forward. Um, we also provide regular updates to the board of directors at Metro, and we do that through a board report process or any time that there's any kind of question that comes up. We work very closely with our small businesses through direct outreach, and we have found that that is the best way of getting the information to them. And um, we also work very closely with our construction relations team. We go to a lot of the construction update meetings and provide information about the BIF program. Um, in addition to that, we create a number of ways of uh, distributing information about the program. We have a quarterly newsletter. We also have um, regular monthly um, profiles of business owners, variety of, diff you know, just to profile the businesses that are on the corridor and that have received grants. Uh, we also do regular social media updates and we have a dedicated webpage on metro.net just for the program itself that outlines all of the criteria and the requirements for the program. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Is there, has there been, uh, it was raised uh, in a prior meeting, issue about Flower Street businesses. Have there been Flower Street business applications um, uh, or is there, was a decision made one way or the other by the, the Metro Board regarding um, Flower Street? I recognize that the Bonaventure doesn't qualify as a mom and pop shop. Um, I don't think that they, they, they do either, uh, think that they do. Um, but are there, were there other issues around Flower Street businesses that um, either were there applications that did or did not make the cut? Uh, and was, was did, the, did the Metro Board make any decision specifically related to Flower Street? So when the program was first approved in 2014, it was only approved for the Little Tokyo area, the regional connector. That was the only area for that project. And then in 2015, when it was expanded, it was expanded to include the second and Broadway segment of the regional connector. So the entirety of the program is not, I mean, the entirety of the project is not part of uh, the BIF program. And so I think that the board has shown uh, their commitment to the small business community by uh, expanding the program already twice in the short time that it's been implemented. Is there any indication that um, that the board might be inclined to expand uh, the business inclusion program um, for the, uh, or the business interruption fund program, we've got our BIP and BIF mixed up, uh, uh, to any other areas related to the regional connector project? Um, you know, as I stated, they've shown, uh, you know, they're very actively involved with the program and um, having expanded the program twice already within, you know, the two and a half years that it's been implemented. Um, they, you know, continually um, listen to staff recommendations. They, you know, they look at our construction relations team. They look at our construction team and look at how are ways that we can further assist small businesses during construction. Okay. Commissioner um, Asento. Thank you, President James. I'll let you know, I'm looking at this slide. It has 2.6 million for the two, for Little Tokyo and a second and, and regional connector. So the balance of that 10.5 million would be Crenshaw LAX? Right, Crenshaw and Purple Line Extension Section 1. Ah. Although the program has already been also expanded to include Section 2, we haven't awarded any grants for Section 2 okay. yet. So for Crenshaw, do you have any off the top of your head, how, what, what out of that remainder, the balance, what has uh, been granted to a, a very impacted community right. um, So of that, 5.3 million have been awarded, has been awarded to the uh, small businesses along Crenshaw, and that represents 257 grants. 
uh, to 100, 135 businesses along the corridor. Okay, that's significant. That's half the program it is. Uh, for one area. Uh, you know, there's, you know, uh, the program is based on direct impact to mm -hmm. those small businesses. Right. Exactly. So. so it's good, and I, I think uh, as Crenshaw continues and, and finishes up as it progresses, that we should continue to pay attention to that uh, business area where, right. um, mm -hmm. you know, the, the metro is going to transform it, but the businesses may not be there that have been there. So I think any help from the BIF uh, is, is really appropriate for that area. So thank right. you. Yeah. Thank you. Anything further? Thank you, ma'am. Good morning, President James, member of the board. Uh, this first slide is our overview slide. I'm sure you're fairly familiar with it for reference. Uh, this is our updated uh, traffic closure map. This is relatively, relatively for Crenshaw, a quiet time for traffic control, but we will next year have some pretty major, uh, when we restore the streets at the stations and uh, restore UG3, which is that south part of Crenshaw where it gets kind of skinny down by 67th Street. We're busy up and down the uh, entire eight and a half miles of the corridor uh, at this time. Starting at the north end, uh, we continue our station build out with uh, structural concrete inside the station boxes. Uh, our cross passages are largely complete with the HDPE. Now we're moving on to structural concrete inside the cross passages. Uh, Lamarck Park Station is uh, moving along with the HDPE and also structural concrete. We have structural concrete going on everywhere underground. Uh, next slide, please. Getting down into segment B with uh, Park Mesa Heights, uh, that entire alignment has now been uh, traffic control established. The next stage after that, next year, once we get uh, all of the sub ballast and uh, ballast in and start doing track, we'll be working on the uh, crossings. Uh, we have a lot of work going down at UG3, which is that lower right-hand slide. Uh, it's an aerial photo of our area where we turn the corner at 67th and turn on to the old BNSF right away and start coming up out of the ground. Also, we have some of our structural steel going up at our stations at La Brea and at, uh, starting at Hyde Park pretty soon and also at West Station. Next slide, please. At the far south end of the project, down by LAX, we've uh, stripped all the forms off of the 405 bridge. Uh, now you can see a, the beautiful span over the 405 freeway. Uh, we have a lot of track work, both direct, direct fixation and ballasted uh, track work going in that entire area all the way down to the Green Line. And at Aviation Century, uh, we're working on some of the more complicated track work, the crossovers and, uh, and uh, turns and that. Is there any questions at this time? Commissioner Davis. In terms of the um, goal of the project, how much percentage of the project have we engaged in in terms of construction thus far, would you say? Uh, we're 100% engaged on the project up and down the alignment. We're approximately 66% complete uh, okay. overall. Okay, and then we anticipate the remainder of the construction to be how many years in terms of the completion? Uh, October 2019 is our revenue operating date. Okay, great. Thank you. Great, thank you. Mr. Clark? Purple line now starts with Section 1 and Jim Cohen's project. President James, members of the board, first slide is uh, just an overview of the entire Purple Line uh, project, which is uh, in three sections. I'm managing Section 1. The entire line picks up at the existing terminus of uh, the existing Purple Line at Wilshire Western and eventually will go out to uh, uh, Westwood in the VA hospital. Section 1 is uh, 3.9 miles. Uh, we have three stations. Again, we pick up at uh, Wilshire Western terminus. We have a staging yard at Crenshaw, our station at La Brea, Fairfax, and then the last station at La Cienega, which is in the city of Beverly Hills. Just some facts on uh, section one. 
we plan on opening uh, on uh, November 8th, 2023. Um, and this is pretty much the standard slide that you folks have seen previously. As far as uh, work out in the field at Wilshire Western, we have a retrieval shaft. It's not a station. Uh, we have a retrieval shaft because a tunnel boring machine, which is going to be placed in at La Brea Station, tunnels to the east. We have to take it out at uh, Wilshire Western where we meet the existing purple line. So we have a, a small uh, underground structure uh, to construct there. At this point in time, uh, we're doing uh, potholing. Uh, we have uh, uh, some engineering drawings in for supportive excavation in, and hopefully uh, we'll be in front of this board either October 4th or October 11th to get a street closure permit uh, in order for us to put our piles in to create the uh, small box section so we will eventually be able to take the uh, TBM out of the ground there. But at this point in time, you can see in the photograph, uh, it's mostly uh, utility uh, potholing. We plan on, uh, in this weekend, starting some sewer relocation at that location. Next. At uh, Wilshire La, La Brea, uh, we're doing excavation and strut installation. Uh, we are completely under, underground. Um, as you can see on the upper photograph, uh, that's an uh, indication of the excavation. We're down to the, uh, almost to the final level. We have one more level of struts to put in before we bottom out at the uh, bottom of that uh, uh, station. And we are uh, uh, currently putting some additional uh, pumping equipment in and we hope to be finished uh, to the bottom of that excavation for the entire 1,000 uh, feet station uh, in December. Next. This is just a uh, bar chart schedule. If you look at the uh, third quarter on 17, you could see on the left side of the slide all the work that's done. We're in the final throws of the uh, excavation and shoring, and to the right of the slide, uh, we'll show you uh, the uh, activities that are uh, in the future at La Brea. At uh, Fairfax, uh, utility hanging uh, and excavation. Uh, we completed our decking operation at Fairfax. Fairfax is completely decked over. We've reached steady state. The street is open from uh, curb to curb. Uh, and now we are in the process of hanging utilities and beginning our excavation. Um, the upper photograph shows the uh, excavation under the deck, and the lower photograph uh, shows the utility hanging. Uh, we are mostly complete with the utility hanging on the east side of the station. We're working on the west side of the station, and the excavation has already begun, and we've installed some struts on the east side of Fairfax. Next. Again, just a bar chart schedule, third quarter, uh, showing that uh, we just uh, recently completed the decking, and we're in the midst of the uh, station excavation and shoring. And that's all I have. Any questions? Anything on Purple Line? Commissioner Davis. Same questions here. In terms of the status of the project, where are we in terms of uh, the uh, work that we have done thus far? What percentage? Is it 60%? Well, it's probably less. No, we're, we're uh, Purple Line, we're around 20, 21% uh, complete. But uh, as you can see, we are active at all uh, four locations, including the uh, retrieval shaft at Wilshire Western. Great. I realize we did start later for that phase. Now, our anticipated date of completion is when for the Purple Line? As uh, I mentioned earlier, our revenue service date right now is November 8th, 2023. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Rivas. One moment, sir. I think you may have answered. Um, I wasn't sure the November 2023 date. Yes. Um, that is for all of Section 1 or just the La Brea? Stage? No, that's complete Section 1. So we will open uh, to uh, La Cienega on that date. So it won't be a phased opening. We will open all three stations oh, okay, at the same time question. on uh, November 8th. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Last uh, but not least is Section 2 and 3, which are uh, Mike McKenna is the project manager for those sections. Good morning, President James, members of the board. Um, section two, the next 2.59 miles of the Purple Line extension with one station in the city of Beverly Hills and one station in the city of Los Angeles. 
About 15% of our alignment is in the city of Los Angeles, but more than half of the work will occur in the city of Los Angeles because we'll be staging construction of the tunnels from Century City. So our forecast revenue service date is a little bit later than Section 1. Uh, we're forecasting August of 2025, but as everyone in this room probably knows, our CEO is directing us to accelerate despite the, uh, the, the decision on the 2028 Olympics. It's still in Metro's best interest to finish section, Sections 2 and 3 earlier than planned. So right now we are five months into the design of the project. We started in May, so we haven't started any physical construction. Uh, if we go on to the next slide, we are doing utility work in Century City right now. We are doing well on utility work thanks to some great cooperation and court, I should say coordination from all of the bureaus. We are progressing the work with telecom work, which should be done this month. Uh, gas company AT&T, DWP, it's going well uh, in at the Constellation Station location. So the next slide, our overall project schedule, you can see major construction doesn't start until the beginning part of 2018. We have an open environmental document that we're looking to complete by the end of this year, so no construction will occur before that. So on to Section 3. Section 3, I don't know how our planning department did it, but it's also 2.59 miles long, uh, exactly. Stations at Westwood and UCLA and Westwood with the, at the VA hospital. Um, the status of this project on our next slide, there's, there's not too much I can talk about this project because we have four procurement blackout periods going on, but the fact that we have four procurement blackout periods going on is great news for us. We just recently on Friday released the RFQ, RFP for the design build contract for the stations, systems, and track work. Back in April, we released an RFQ, RFP for the design build contract for the tunnels. We also have a construction management support services contract on the street and an advanced utility relocation contract for the UCLA station that we anticipate awarding in October. So we're making great progress on the procurement of all of the, the Purple Line Section 3 contracts. So with that, if you have any questions on either Sections 2 or 3. Commissioner Davis. In the um, work that we have done, we have done how, many, how much percentage of the work thus far? I know that this, too, started later than other phases of the project, but how much percentage have we done to date of the work? So on Section 2, we've done um, about 25% of the design work okay. and no construction yet. Okay. Now, in terms of the station, is this an underground station? Yes, all four stations on Sections 2 and 3 are underground. Okay, and that will be at the UCLA location? Yes. gone through is trying to secure the full funding grant agreement from the federal government. So we're working very closely with them. We're still going through the process. I know there's some questions about the funding and the status of that program, but the Federal Transit Administration has told us to keep, keep moving, and that's what we're doing. Now, this is for the adequate funding for the implementation of underground stations, is that? For the entire line oh, so we line have an okay. agreement for sections one and two we're now seeking one for section three great yes. so i would suspect that we are having a great relationship with the current department of transportation in washington that is we actually have a great relationship with the staff at the federal transit administration of course they're guided by political things you know which are out of their control everything in their control we're working very well together well, I thought that transportation was apolitical but I, <laughs> I, that's, yeah that's that would be great yeah uh, I think it's fair to say that those discussions um, with the um, author with the authorities and the officials in Washington are continuing though um, and there's reason there's reason uh, for optimism so uh, I would just ask um, did the uh, now that the Olympics issue is clear um, on the year and that it's definitely 2028, Mr. Clark, does that does that do you, does Metro feel that 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 helps 
um, with the um, the current requests that are that are pending? I think it uh, it gives us some breathing room. So, um, you know, I have to say I breathe a sigh of relief, but I think also to make 2024 some of the uh, impacts and. Uh, shutdowns that we'd be requesting would be pretty draconian and I'm sure we would have had some interesting discussions in this room to request things like that but now we can you know as Mike said our CEO is still pushing hard but we probably won't have to go to some of the more draconian requests that we would have had to have made okay thank you anything further the oral report will be received thank you both already had comment yeah um, so the oral report will be received um, and, and, we, and mr. Sutton, we gave you additional time as well um, regarding agenda item number four um, fund substitution North Central Animal Care Center phase two project council district one recommending that the board approve the substitution of one hundred and forty thousand seven hundred fifty nine dollars in funding for the North Central Animal Care Center Phase Two project, from Fund Number 15L, Department Number 50, Appropriation Number 50, TPAD, to Fund Number 16K, Department Number 50, Appropriation Unit Number 50, APAD, and request the Office of Accounting to effect any and all required accounting transactions. Mr. Kawaguchi, what we're doing here is the same department, just different funds. So, what's going on? Good morning, uh, President James, Commissioners, Board. Uh, this is part of the end that defeasement of the bonds that the CAO is doing. Um, so they, they closed out roughly about nine different funds and all the accounts below it, which add to about close to 200. So as we're closing those out, they've left us one or two funds, uh, funds accounts. So we're moving the money, not moving the money, we're actually using those funds now to substitute in. So we're not changing the budget, the dollar value, it's just using substituting one fund for another. And this is something that's gonna be probably continuing throughout the year as we see each uh, accounts because we have so many different contracts uh, as we get to them and get to payments and, and work with it then the CAO directs us one way or the other as to if there's money in there to use or they want us to substitute out okay um, mr. Jordan just since you're here and um, we are on an oral record um, is this okay with uh, the city attorney's office procedurally uh, yes yes we do not have any uh, problems with this Okay. Any questions on agenda item number four? Uh, Commissioner Sindos made a motion that we adopt agenda item number four. Um, I'll second it. Any objection? With that objection, we will adopt agenda item number four. Any issues sending number four forthwith? We will send number four forthwith. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Agenda item number two is a tree removal in Council District 14, 928 through 1026 South Broadway Street recommending that the board certify that it has reviewed and considered the information in the mitigated negative declaration for the project at 928 through 1026 South Broadway Street and find the information contained therein appropriately addresses the requested tree removals. Secondly, find that the project will not have a significant environmental effect under the above described MND as the imposition of the mitigation measures described in the MND and incorporated herein as project conditions such that there is no substantial evidence the proposed project will have a significant effect on the environment pursuant to the city's environmental guidelines and is in compliance with the California Environmental Quality Act. Third, find that the project's conflict with any local policies or ordinances protecting biological resources, such as tree preservation policies or ordinances or other ordinances is less than significant with the incorporation of mitigation measures 4-70 as contained in the MND. Number four, adopt the MND. Number five, specify that the Bureau of Street Services, Urban Forestry Division, located at 1149 South Broadway, is custodian of the documents or other material, I should say, and other material that constitute the record of proceedings upon which the board's decision is based. And number six, approve the request for a fee tree removal permit for three carrot wood trees and eight London plane trees. Tree replacements are required. Mr. Tyson on number two. Good morning, President James, Commissioners, City Attorney, Executive Officer, and Bureau Representatives. I have a package here I would like Dr. Kim. This is 
there were some photos that weren't provided that I made sure uh, we've got some photos of the London plane trees and the corresponding sidewalks that are they are planted in and the tree report which uh, didn't see here which is a one-page tree report on that one-page tree report it states that there were no significant trees on the property prior to the beginning of this project now moving forward GH Palmer and Associates are constructing a multi-story residential tower located at 928 South Broadway Street as part of a city planning case DIR 2013-1216 SPRCDO the proposed development will have 437 residential units including 10 live-in and work units approximately 29,409 square feet of commercial and retail uses, approximately 6,200 square feet of live-in and work commercial space, and a lobby with recreational amenities. Contained in the entitlements are Bureau of Engineering requirements for sidewalk, curb, and gutter repairs and other related improvements, including the installation of bump outs as part of the Department of City Planning Broadway Streetscape Plan. Mr. Drew Priceman, property owner representative, applied to the Bureau of Engineering for a Class A and Class BR permit, which is a, a B permit with a revocable condition, to perform sidewalk and related roadway improvements. The Bureau informed Mr. Priceman the required public sidewalk improvements and installation of the bump outs may necessita necessitate street tree removals. Therefore, Mr. Pressman contacted the Bureau of Street Services requesting the project site to be inspected. A Bureau of Arborists inspected the location on February 6, 2017. The inspection revealed eight London plane trees growing in front of the location and three carrot wood trees growing on the Main Street side. In front of the location would be on the Broadway Street side. A follow-up inspection was performed on February 16, 2007. The inspection revealed one of the carrot wood trees had been removed without a permit for reasons unknown. The remaining 10 street trees are in poor to fair condition and measure approximately 10 to 15 inches in diameter by 20 to 30 feet in height and are growing in four foot tree wells, one of which is dead. The trees will be severely impacted by the required public sidewalk curb and gutter improvements and the installation of the bump outs not to mention the construction that just went on around them for a number of months. Within the contents of the letter of determination, Bureau of Engineering condition of approval 17 Alpha, George, Hotel, Indica, and, and uh, Jasmine, and M, Mark, requires the developer to perform sidewalk, curb, gutter improvements, and perform the installation of bump outs. The required public sidewalk improvements and installation of the bump outs will severely impact the street trees. The Bureau agrees that performing sidewalk curb gutter repairs and installation of the bump outs will require the trees to be removed. To mitigate for the one tree that was removed, the one dead tree, and the other remaining trees, the applicant shall plant six 36 inch box size jacaranda trees five 20 foot, 22 foot brown trunk Mexican fan palms on South Main Street and plant five 36 inch box Brisbane box trees on South Broadway Street as per Broadway streetscape plans and approve the BR permit. Additionally, the applicant shall plant six 36 inch box size trees off site. in landscape center medians at the following locations. Two jacaranda trees across from 2865 West Olympic Boulevard, two crepe myrtle trees across from 3099 West Olympic Boulevard, and two jacaranda trees across from 3171 West Olympic Boulevard to replace the removed trees. All replacement trees shall be provided irrigation for a minimum of a three year period after planting. Nate Hayward, 14th Council District Office, was informed of the pending tree removal request on February 6, 2017. Notice of the proposed tree removals were physically posted on the subject trees on February 16, 2017 as well.
proposed tree removals were included in the Bureau of Street Services Tree Removal Notification System, and the Community Forest Advisory Committee was also notified. So for the one tree that was removed uh, without a permit, they will be mitigating with a two to one on that. And for the dead tree, uh, which we normally don't have anyone mitigate for, we're gonna have them mitigate on that tree as well for the tree that was removed unpermitted. What's the mitigation on the, uh, the one that was unpermitted? Recognizing it, I, I know it's not a protected tree, so we don't have some of the other um, ordinance implications, but what's the mitigation on the one that was removed um, uh, uh, unpermitted the one that was unpermitted is going to be a two to one and also the dead tree will be two to one and that's how we're making sure we get all replacement trees including the dead tree to compensate for the tree that was removed unpermitted also the the size of the trees are 36 inch box trees all of them have they been uh, cooperative the entity that you've worked with the applicant um, uh, through the process, e even regarding the unpermitted removal of the, um, the street tree? That's absolutely uh, true and correct. Uh, President James, they have worked well with us. They're not like some of the developers who go in and remove 25 trees unpermitted. This was a one tree removal. They came back to us, let us know. Uh, we've considered everything. Uh, that's why we're gonna have them plant larger trees as well as mitigate for the one dead tree. Okay. Any other questions? Commissioner Sento. Thank you, President Riggs. Tim, thank you for this. Couple things, the, the Mexican fan palms, those are for aesthetic reasons to match? Yes, running up and down um, the uh, Main Street side, and they have a building A and a building B, and in front of the uh, other building, they have uh, the Mexican fan palms, so we're gonna create that look. Understood, makes throughout. sense. The 30 inch, 36 inch box size, that's the largest we could do for that area? Yeah, this, that's, that's as big as we can toenail into these, these wells. Uh, the uh, sidewalks, the curbs, everything, they're gonna have to tear everything absolutely out. Uh, I've looked at the conditions, even some of the conditions since these photos were taken, the, 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 they have actually damaged more and more of the sidewalk working and building the structure. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's good that we're maxing out on you know the, the size of the trees for the amount of sidewalk we have. And the medians, they're all located very close by? Yes, and, and realize that the, uh, by having them plant these mediums, we're not allowing trees to be delivered to the nursery. Correct, and that's a good thing. And if it's close, there's that nexus, it makes sense. It, it, we have to actually go out and search out these locations uh, and find them. Good, thanks for doing that, Tim. Absolutely. Anything further? Uh, Commissioner Sint has made a motion that we adopt agenda item number two. I'll second it, any objection? Without objection, we'll adopt agenda item number two. Any issues sending two forthwith? We will send number two forthwith. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Um, Dr. Campos, have we cleared the desk? Yes, you have. Okay, then we are adjourned this Monday morning. Thank you, everyone.